What's going on, Savages? So today what I want to talk to you guys about is I want to talk to you guys about Beyond Meat. A lot of people think that Beyond Meat is good for you, is it bad for you? People don't really fucking know. So I'm gonna go show you guys what the deal is. I don't wanna give you guys any bullshit. I wanna knock it down, let you guys know what's up. We're gonna get into this one right now. Beyond Meat, is it good for you, is it bad for you? One thing I want you guys to keep in mind as well is it's a lot of times it's the methods that are the problem and it's giving people wrong information. So I kind of isolate one thing that they're telling us is not good for us and I isolate that so we can kind of work on figuring out why they said what they did and how we can use our mind a little bit better in order to come to better conclusions. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm gonna keep giving you guys awesome information. Let's keep this baby rolling. <laughs> times a lot of people don't take into account what's actually happening when it comes to the studies that people are getting this information from they're taking information that's not actually geared towards giving you the right information and they're going off on a tangent and saying this is bad for you right now when we look at the studies let's look at one thing like soy protein isolate that's one of the ingredients that's found in beyond meat right now one of the things they say that soy protein isolate on its own has what's called genistein in it right now genistein is a phytoestrogen now phytoestrogens have actually amazing cancer preventing methods when you eat them in a plant-based diet now there's one study in particular where this soy protein isolate was fed to rats right now these rats that they were that were they were also feeding the soy protein isolate to they also got rid of their t-cells right so their t-cells were also getting rid of as well which means that any tumors that were in them would would be able to grow and proliferate instead of getting rid of them right now the body when you start getting rid of t-cells and stuff like that the immune system will fight it then you have other issues that are going to go on in the body so the the cancer and the tumor ends up growing now within this study allowing the cancer to grow allows them to study the cancer to see is it actually causing the cancer to grow but what you're also doing is you're causing the cancer to grow by getting rid of certain hormones in the body that are allowing these rats to grow um, cancer right and now again obviously what they found is they took these rats they went and they gave them soy protein isolate again genistein and they found that these rats developed tumors more than rats that weren't given this right conclusion genistein causes cancer but is that a conclusion how can we go into a lab give them to rats that are fed nothing else in isolation from their actual natural environment and say that this is widespread across the board to human beings as well. We can't, right? That's a simple answer to it. And when you take a human being now, and now you put genistein in the larger picture with plants, the micronutrients that are in them, the macronutrients that are in them, you can see that you can actually study these things in isolation and come to a conclusion because nothing in nature exists in isolation. Just like soy protein isolate and genistein does not exist in isolation. There's thousands of other chemical reactions that are going on within other plant foods. Again, when it comes to Beyond Meat, we obviously have other compounds that are in there as well, right? But within genistein, there's probably other compounds as well that we haven't even discovered that go together to create something and maybe there was something within that, that that's um, cancer preventing, right? So those are things that we need to take into account. And so that brings me to the point of reductionism, right? Now our whole medical model is based on what's called reductionist. Our whole research model is based on reductionist, which means I'm gonna take a particular thing and I'm gonna study it in isolation away from everything else. So I'm gonna stay, take soy protein isolate and all the other compounds or all the other things that I find within a Beyond Meat burger, and I'm gonna study them in isolation and say in isolation on a rat in a Petri dish, it's cancer causing, right? But again, that has nothing to do with actually happening in real time with a human being, which a human being again has, you know, day-to-day -day lives, are they exercising? How's the rest of their nutrition? What are they doing on, the, on a day-to-day -day basis? What's their energy levels like, right? Because everything like that is what's gonna come together and give us a clear picture of is this cancer causing or not? Even if you had genistein in there, there's thousands again of other chemical reactions that are existing as a whole um, part and not in isolation that could be the reason that prevents anything that had a negative reaction on its own from having that reaction because now we're going to add in everything else as a whole complex picture that might prevent that thing in isolation from causing cancer or doing whatever it does right it's important for us to look at other studies as well right because other studies paint a different picture they say things like genistein for example are angiogenesis inhibitors now angiogenesis inhibitors means that the body or these compounds prevent the body from creating too many new blood cells. Now, anytime the body can create too many new blood cells, what ends up happening is a tumor ends up forming, right? So we got studies now that are showing us that genistein, um, or coming from soy or soy protein isolate, again, there's a connection there because genistein is within soy products, right? 
that we see that genesis is an angiogenesis inhibitor, meaning it can stop blood cells from coming together, proliferating and causing tumors, right? So on the one side we see this, and on the other side we see this. But again, the most important thing to take into account is not how these things interact on their own, which is the reductionist method, but it's how in a, in a complex system and as a whole, how are they interacting with that person? Now that same person that's eating beyond meat, or how, again, are they working, are they exercising, how's the rest of their diet? And that is gonna give us a clear picture if they have cancer and not a Beyond Meat burger on its own because there's no human being out there that eats a Beyond Meat burger on its own and the only way to find out if it's actually doing something to you is to actually go and study that same person eating only a Beyond Meat burger for 20 to 30 years and then seeing what do they have. And not only that, but then you need to get a thousand other people or two thousand other people and saying, is this what's happening or is this not what's happening? Because if that's not the case, again, we're doing what's called an extrapolation and we're reaching for results that aren't actually there. And that's very important to understand when we're looking at something is good for you or something is bad for you. We need to look at that whole picture, which is the most important thing. Now, one study that they actually did that with is a study on meat called the China study. You can look at this up yourself. Now, they looked at rural areas of China where meat wasn't predominant in those rural areas, more high class affluent societies where more meat was being eaten. And what they found was in the affluent societies where more meat was being eaten, is what they found was in those high affluent societies where more meat was being eaten was a chemical or metabolite known as TMAO. Now TMAO, what that did, that metabolite ended up causing or functioning with other things in the body and ended up causing more cancer. So people that ate more meat within the affluent areas of society ended up having more cancer than the people that lived in the rural areas of China, right? Now this was done on studies of over 30,000 people, right? So it was a large study that actually was happening and they found these results time and time again. And what ended up happening is when they got rid of the meat, they noticed that cancer rates started coming down, right? So if we wanna point fingers, we wanna point blames on plant-based, or we wanna point bl uh, blames on meat, I'm not saying anybody's right or anybody's wrong. What I'm saying is look at the whole picture. Find out what's going on. What are we actually looking at? Are we actually looking at Beyond Meat or are we, are we isolating five to 10 different things and looking at them on their own? using the reductionist method. We need to look at the whole picture, get the whole result in order for us to come to the conclusion. And we cannot do that right now based on where we are unless we get 20 years on the road on somebody who's only eating Beyond Meat burgers to find out what's actually happening.